All right, welcome to episode number two of this very course, right? We have completed episode number one just yesterday. So make sure you guys check that out before you move on to this particular video. If you guys want to use this course as efficiently as possible, make sure you check the timestamps over there. Watch time really doesn't matter. Just be productive over here, right? Watch this at 1.25x, 1.5x, 2x, however you're comfortable. And yeah, just follow on with the course. So let's go ahead and continue where we last left off. So we're going to first learn how do we represent a vector in three dimensions and what is the standard form of writing a vector, right? Now that was a really boring intro. I know you would have expected something fun, but <laughs> we have a lot to cover in this particular episode, right? So let's begin. Now, how do we represent a vector in three dimensions? Interesting question. First, let's go ahead and understand what three dimensions really are. When we talk about two dimensions, we just had our X and our Y plane. Now, did it matter if this over here instead of Y was X and if this over here instead of X, it was Y? Not really. It really doesn't matter. You can choose, you can choose this plane in any orientation, right? Now, this is your two dimensional plane. You have only two dimensions. One is your length, other is your width. Right now we're going to add a third dimension to this. The third dimension to this is height, right? So it's going to be coming out of the screen. Now, of course, you guys would know I can't draw something coming out of the screen because you get it right. So this is how you represent this. The, this is the three dimensional. Uh, what, what, what do I even call this? This is a three dimensional. Okay, it's not supposed to be called a plane. Okay, the right word isn't coming. It's three dimensions. This is what three dimensions look like. This is your length. This is your breadth. And this is your height, right? Now, again, it really doesn't matter if over here, instead of this X, you chose this to be Z. And instead of this Y, you chose this to be X. And instead of this, you chose this to be Y, right? It really doesn't matter. What matters is that they should be mutually perpendicular to each other. That's all, right? So now we're going to go ahead and see what the standard form of a vector looks like. Now, any vector in this world, okay, any vector, take any vector, take, take the vector that's next door, take the vector that your friend has, any vector in this world, any vector, let's say a vector can be represented as a i cap plus b j cap plus c k cap. Now don't get scared. Don't get scared. You would have seen this notation in your book at least at one or two places if you're looking at the right chapter all right don't look at the wrong chapter okay bad joke right so you would have seen this notation and this might look a little scary what what's this over here what what is this what is this right looks like a roof but no these three that you have over here this i cap j cap and k cap that's how we call them these are what we call unit vectors Right. Now, what really are unit vectors? From the name itself, we understand unit vectors are vectors which have magnitude equal to one, right? Unit vector, unit means one. So we have unit vectors are magnitude is equal to one unit, right? It can be anything, meter, centimeter, kilometer, anything. Right? We just have to, you know, it just has to be one. So now this is what our unit vectors really are. Now, what is the purpose of unit vector? Of course, it gives us only the magnitude of one unit. So it doesn't really tell us a lot about the magnitude of the vector. But what it tells us about is the direction. So if you look clearly, your vector is basically your magnitude into direction right it's basically your magnitude into direction if i divide this by magnitude right let me just make it visible for you guys if i divide the vector wait let me make this a little neater <laughs> this looks disgusting so i'll just go ahead and make this a little bit neater right so we know 
that a vector is basically equal to magnitude times direction now direction over here times direction doesn't mean that you multiply uh, the magnitude into the angle right because we talked about direction is just basically an angle that the vector makes with respect to any line right so you of course you can't you can't really multiply those two quantities what multiplication over here means that it is a combination of these two properties right it is a combination of magnitude and it is a combination of direction here remember we are not multiplying direction times magnitude because you can't do that right you can't multiply direction times magnitude okay so now what we do is we divide both sides by magnitude all right i know most of you guys would be pointing out why didn't i just take this magnitude over here and it goes in the denominator and then that gives me the exact same thing i didn't do that because most most people are generally comfortable when i do it with the longer step and i, I mean it's the same thing so if you divide a vector by its own magnitude it just gives you the direction of the vector all right so we understand this right and this is a very important thing right don't 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 go ahead and mug this up all right this is just a concept that i'm teaching you right so if we have any vector and if we go ahead and divide it by its own magnitude then it gives you what is called as a unit vector which gives you the direction of that particular vector all right now how do we go ahead and find the magnitude of a vector this is extremely important and you need to understand this so if we have to find the magnitude of any vector let's say b vector which is some a i cap plus b j cap i'm just taking a standard case all right so we can apply it anywhere now the magnitude of b vector over here in the previous episode you would have seen that uh, i just gave the magnitude directly as four units right four units or five units whatever i gave it as you would have seen i directly gave the magnitude all right but here i'm teaching you how to calculate the magnitude from the standard form of the vector so to calculate the magnitude from the standard form of the vector you just have to square each one of these components so it's basically going to be under root a square plus b square plus c square that's all right that's how you get the magnitude of the vector right we're going to understand this geometrically as well but that is as we proceed once we learn components we'll be able to understand this geometrically as well the thing about vectors is that everything is interlinked right you need to assume something to learn something because if i if i teach you then i would have to teach you let's say let's have to teach you a topic a right now to learn the topic a you need to know a topic b but to learn the topic b you need to know the topic a so it's very interlinked right so it makes it a lot more tougher to you know go ahead and proceed in a sequence right that is why you might be seeing that at some places i'm missing the sequence but that's completely all right because at the end of the day we are covering every single thing right so this is how you go ahead and find the magnitude let's go ahead and take an example right so uh if we have a vector c vector all right we write this as 2i cap plus 4j cap and don't worry i'll tell you what this i cap j cap k cap are now how do we go ahead and find the magnitude just give me a second how do we go ahead and find the magnitude of c vector over here you just have to do this 2 square plus 4 square plus 3 square that's going to give you what under root 29 right so we got it and uh, i'll just go ahead and expand it uh, so it's going to be 4 plus 9 plus 16 entire under root which is basically under root 29 so it's it's very simple if you see it right it's extremely simple let's go ahead and take another example this time let's take a vector that is only in x and y plane i'll tell you why i said only x and y plane because you'll understand right so let's say we have some b vector all right this b vector is 3i cap plus 
j cap plus 0 k cap all right now so now if we have to find the magnitude of b vector what we're going to do is we're going to square each one of these components and in a few moments you'll realize why i'm calling them components because i'm assuming that you guys don't know what components are so this gives you under root 9 plus 16 which is which is 5 let me write that better so the magnitude of b vector over here is 5 right so this is how simple it is let me give you one more question just in case uh, you need an one more to practice so let's say here we have some p vector this p vector is given as x i cap plus let's say 2 j cap plus 3 k cap right now we need to find x such that the magnitude of p vector becomes equal to 4. This question is again very simple. We are just going to go ahead and substitute in the formula. We know the magnitude which is 4. So under root 4 has to be equal to under root x square plus 2 square which is 4 plus 3 square which is 9. Let's square both sides. 16 is equal to uh, I'm sorry 16 is equal to x square plus 13. We get x is equal to Give me a second. So we get x is equal to plus minus root 3. Now over here you would be noticing that in this case I have taken plus minus root 3 while in the previous one I didn't take plus minus 5. Why? Because here we are calculating the value of the magnitude magnitude does not it, it the sign of the magnitude does not matter what matters is the quantity that is in it which is magnitude is basically the mod function right so you put the mod function which eliminates the negative sign so it really doesn't matter if there's a positive sign or negative sign we just have to look at the quantity right so that gives us five but over here we aren't calculating the magnitude we are calculating the component right so it can either be plus root 3 or minus root 3 and in each one of them they're two different things all right they're not going to be the same thing and i'll tell you why now let's go ahead and understand what i cap j cap and k cap are it this is just going to take two seconds right so when i talked about our three dimensional three dimensions when i talk talked about three dimensions we had our x-axis like this, y-axis like this, and z-axis like this. Just for simplicity, this is how everyone is used to. That's why I'm assuming this. You can assume however you want. Now, what we did was we defined unit vectors. We defined unit vectors along x as i cap, unit vector along y as k cap, and unit vector along, okay, I'm really sorry, unit vector along y as what am I doing? Unit vector along y as j cap and unit vector along z as k cap. Unit vector is again basically a vector which has magnitude 1, just gives us a direction. So your i cap would look something like this, assuming that this is magnitude 1 over here, this is one unit, right? This is going to be your i cap vector. i cap vector is also written as one i cap. All right, which is the exact same thing. I'm pretty sure you guys understood. When we talk about J cap, again, along the Y direction, one unit. J cap is a vector, right? Your I cap, J cap and K cap are vectors of magnitude one, all of them, along the X, Y and Z directions respectively. All right, let me go ahead and repeat that. Your i, j and k cap, i cap, j cap and k cap are vectors of magnitude one unit and they are along the directions of x, y and z axis respectively. All right. So we understood it. 
right and similarly when we talk about k cap it's going to be pointing along this and this is going to be one unit you understood it right so this is what your i cap j cap and k cap really is now we're going to go ahead and understand how to break any vector into components right and using the the component method of vector addition is the simplest all right you are actually going to even forget you know your uh, triangle of vector addition altogether once you do this so let me go ahead and show this to you now it's very simple you just need to know the procedure so let's assume there's some vector like this let's say this is some b vector now it is given to us all right now pay attention very closely all right now i'm going to stop having fun for two minutes just pay attention over here so now it is given to us that the magnitude of b vector is equal to let's say four units all right it's given to us now what we can do is break it into components how do we break it into components right what are components components are basically your vectors that give the given vector as a resultant <laughs> let me repeat that that might be confusing now your components are basically two vectors or even more vectors which give the resultant vector as the given vector so basically the component of b vector is two vectors over here since we are assuming only in two dimensions are going to be two vectors the vector sum of which would give us b vector right i'll write it all right and we are going to have another component like this the component of a vector will always be mutually perpendicular remember this okay you can't you can't have one component like this and one component like this all right you can't what we are basically doing is we're just being smart and applying the triangle law right now look closely what i'm doing is i'm going to go i'm just going to go ahead make a vector like this from here to here i'm going to make a vector like this cool now you can see that this vector over here this result this becomes our resultant now right using the triangle law of vector addition we know that this over here becomes our resultant so the resultant over here all right our resultant is equal to b vector that's just what we have done all right this becomes equal to b vector now that we have assumed that components are perpendicular this over here becomes your 90 degrees right now we're going to be smart now i'll tell you what we're going to do now what we're going to do is we're going to assume this angle over here to be theta right we'll assume this side to be x this side to be y right so can we write over here and this this length over here we are assuming the lengths okay we are not assuming vectors we are assuming the magnitude of these vectors so these are basically the magnitude of the component vectors right hopefully you guys are understanding i know it takes time and if 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 you guys don't understand just make sure you repeat it once or twice because it took me also a while when i was learning this it didn't make sense why is this supposed to be perpendicular but then eventually it is going to make sense right just think about it using the pythagoras theorem and the triangle law of vector addition it'll all make sense right so we are assuming the length of this the magnitude of these components to be x and y respectively now the length of this side would basically be the magnitude of uh, your b vector right so we can write this as magnitude b vector now we are just going to use some trigonometry all right so we can say that x divided by magnitude of b vector is equal to cos theta can we say that right we can say that so we get x is equal to magnitude of b vector times cos theta right now you'll understand this now let's just go ahead and substitute the magnitude of 
b vector which is basically 4 so we can write 4 cos theta now let's do the same thing with y over here right uh, so we can write just give me a second we can write that y divided by magnitude of b vector is equal to sine theta right again we're going to move this to the other side so we get y is equal to magnitude b vector times sine theta let's just go ahead and substitute it substitute the value so we get y is equal to 4 sine theta now here comes the most important part of vectors right here we're going to learn about projection all right so what do we really see over here all right this this end part is actually not important you even if you didn't substitute this part doesn't really matter you just need to understand it till here all right now let's go ahead and visualize this exact same vector this p vector on a cartesian plane all right so let's go ahead and draw our cartesian plane give me a second let's move it here all right trying to draw it really sorry all right so this is our cartesian plane and just give me a second so this becomes our cartesian plane and this vector over here will become our b vector all right this is our b vector i'll just go ahead and write that now the most important thing your components are basically the projection of the vector let me tell you how so what we're going to do is actually this color was bad i should have used this let me use this to represent b vector so b vector comes out something like this all right i'm going to write it like this. now now for two seconds pay complete attention what i'm going to do is i'm going to take a torch all right all of us know what a torch is right and i'm going to pass in some parallel beam of light all right parallel beams of light this is very good for visualization now if i you know pass parallel beams of light like this right do you see that the shadow that will be casted over here would basically be this it would be in the same height as this right as b vector it would be the same height now we are going to do the exact same thing but this time we're going to put the torch from top so this time this is where our torch is all right let me just see if you guys can see it clearly yep it's clear all right so this time this is where our torch is and this is how we are passing light right parallel beams of light parallel beam of light okay and now do you guys see that the shadow that's going to form over here will basically be this equal to this length of this b vector now i'm pretty sure you guys would have visualized it already this over here is known as the x component if you are calling this your x axis so this is known as your x component of b vector and this over here is called as your y component right this is your y component of b vector all right so this part was pretty simple and i'm pretty sure you guys understood it now what we do is we find the value of this you are going to understand that what we took over here this x over here is basically equal to this thing right because over here we took the exact same components to give us the resultant as b vectors over here also we are getting the exact same thing 
so what what you get over here is basically x what you get over here is basically your y all right bad color selection i think i should choose in more colors wait let's try what about light blue no light blue looks boring what about white all right okay so what we have over here is your y this becomes your y which we derived over here which is your b sin theta mod b sin theta and what we have over here is your x what we derived as mod b cos theta so this is also known as the cos component of b vector all right this is cos component of b vector assuming that this angle over here is theta this angle is theta right so this is your cos component of b vector this x is known as your cos component of b vector this y over here is known as your sine component of b vector so that is how you simply do this right that is how you break it now now we have come to the point where we can write vectors in their standard form right so what we're going to do of course we'll take examples of this don't worry if you didn't understand right now we'll do two questions you'll understand every single thing i guarantee you that right so now what we're going to do is we're going to see for those of you who have understood it so far just go ahead and look at this this will just clear your concepts right okay so now this we we assumed we know that this is going to be your i cap right your unit vector along the x axis is i cap unit vector along your y axis is j cap now this is how we do it so we can write this as magnitude of b vector cos theta i cap plus magnitude of b vector sin theta j cap is equal to your b vector do you guys see it what is your b cos theta your b cos theta is basically this vector over here this x over here right your b cos theta is this magnitude right this x over here so you're doing magnitude times the direction which gives you this particular vector right which gives you this particular vector which is basically a projection from top which came in like this right now when we look at b vectors okay what did i do <laughs> okay yeah now when when we look at b vector mod b vector sin theta j cap this is basically your projection like this right so what we did over here your b sin theta is basically the magnitude of this vector while your j cap gives you the direction so when you have magnitude and the direction then you get a vector right then you get a vector so we are basically saying that this vector that we get b cos theta i cap plus this b sin theta j cap this is basically giving us your b vector that you initially took is that right that is 100% right all right that is a 100% right because that is what we started off with we assumed it that these two are perpendicular right and then we used triangle law of vector addition see now for those of you who would be wondering why do we choose it to be perpendicular just tell me this if we didn't have this as perpendicular would we be able to use the trigonometric formula no right it would have become much more complicated because of course we can still use it on any sort of triangle let's say even if we had okay let me just give you an example let's consider let's consider that this is your b vector over here all right let's say this is your b vector like this and this time let's not take the components perpendicular let's say i take one component like this and of course from the triangle rule you can verify that this is still right all right let's say this don't don't assume this to be an equi an equilateral triangle because 
I haven't mentioned anything like that. Of course, even over here, we can use trigonometry. We can just go ahead and draw a perpendicular. But what happens over here is you get this angle as theta one, this angle as theta two, and basically you get nothing, right? You get nothing out of this. You cannot resolve it into components, right? So what we did over here was we chose perpendiculars, right? Uh, let me just we chose perpendicular components so that we could apply the trigonometric formulae to get or to resolve our b vector into its corresponding x and y components once we did that once we found the magnitude of these components we multiplied them by the unit vectors acting along the directions right i cap and j cap once we did that we got two vectors and we came back to where we started off with right so that is how you resolve any vector any vector into components you just have to take any mutually perpendicular axis right let's go ahead and solve two questions over here before we solve two questions let me drink some water hmm all right so now let's go ahead okay let's see what else do we have remaining okay we we have very little topics remaining we just have multiplication left after this of course addition as well and after that we'll have multiplication of vectors and we're done with vectors then we're going to begin with tensors all right tensors i'm going to wrap up with in just one episode so yeah so after that we're going to have our practice session and uh, then we're going to have a break of around two to three days where you guys can chill and of course i'm also going to take a break from shooting videos and you know planning with all of that and uh, yeah then we're going to get back again i'm going to drop in three to four videos at once so you guys can binge watch i don't know who's going to binge watch physics but if you do love you guys all right so now let's go ahead and take an example all right i liked i liked this one uh actually let's take red so here we have a question so this is our a vector and it is given that we have this mutually perpendicular axis let me just go ahead and show you what mutually perpendicular axis am i talking about just trying to complicate things a little bit for you guys so that you understand the feel of it because there's no point if you don't you know right now listen understand this right now you won't you won't really get the point of choosing the axis right but when we move on to questions where we deal with inclined plane or forces or accelerations or different vectors which are acting in random directions then we have to choose our axis accordingly to break all the vectors into components because when we have multiple vectors acting we need to be smart right we need to be smart and we need to choose most vectors on the axis itself right we'll choose most as much as possible of these vectors on the axis itself so that they cut out each other and if you're not able to understand that right now don't worry right just follow on over here if you don't understand the point of taking axis tilted over here or you know take it straight or whatever you will understand it very soon when we begin with newton's laws of motion when we study mechanics you will see that the acceleration is going there and force is acting there normal is acting there and you'll understand that so over there you will have to begin taking your uh, this axis very very carefully right so that's why i'm just getting you guys used to it right now this over here isn't my components this is the axis that i'm choosing to make my components right like if you would have seen over here i chose this axis right i made this thing over here this this entire graph that i made that is basically my axis all right so now what we're going to do is we are given that we are given that the magnitude of a vector is equal to 5 and this angle is 60 degrees this is your i cap this is your j cap now we need to write a vector 
in its standard form what was standard form a i cap plus b j cap and you get it right that was the standard form so we need to write this in the standard form to write it in the standard form again we're going to follow the same procedure we're going to take a torch we're going to you know shoot parallel beam of light beams of light on it beam or whatever i <laughs> i don't know why i keep forgetting it okay now you're going to get a shadow right something like this and you're going to get another shadow like this if you have a torch up here let me just scroll this a little down so if you have a torch up here like this right so now what will the magnitude of this green vector over here be the magnitude of this green vector will be mod a vector cos 60 degree why 60 degree because this was our theta while we were deriving the components, right? Don't mug up the formula, use your concepts. If you're not able to, you know, visualize this as A cos 60, it's all right. Shift this vector, shift this vector over here, shift it and move it over here. Once you move it here, you get a right angle triangle. Once you have a right angle triangle, let's assume, what happened? Oh my God. Did this just crash? yeah it crashed so just just give me a second okay this is this is what i thought would go wrong and this is what went wrong in the middle of the session this is what happens don't worry i'll cut this part out um all right so we are back now what happened over there was that my you know virtual tablet which is basically the graphics pad that disconnected so now we are back let's continue right so as i was saying uh, as i was saying what you can do over here is you can just shift this vector and this becomes into a right angle triangle now just apply trigonometry which again going to i'm going to do this for the last time after this you guys can do it yourself so we can assume this to be x we can assume this to be y now this is mod a vector right now using trigonometry can we write over here cos 60 degree is equal to x divided by mod a vector so do we get x is equal to mod a vector times cos 60 degrees we do get that right and similarly when we write sine 60 degrees that will be equal to y divided by mod a vector again take this to the other side we get mod a vector times sine 60 degree is equal to y okay again something happened okay is equal to y all right so basic derivation that takes around two seconds and once you get used to this once you visualize it it's going to take you seconds all right the shortcut over here is just see the angle that lies in between the axis in between the axis this one over here that i'm marking this angle right look at that angle and whatever lies uh, how am i going to say uh, how should i explain this yeah now if you go ahead and okay the simplest way to imagine this is just throw light from it 
that's that's the simplest way projection is the simplest way but if you want the shortcut if you want to do it within seconds just just do this all right if you have your vector if you have this as your x axis if you if you have this as your x component if you have this as a y component if this is theta and let's say the magnitude of this is some a right so this one over here will be equal to a cos theta and what's opposite to it this one over here will be equal to a sine theta that's how you do it within seconds right you'll get used to it once you do this triangle derivation twice or thrice i did that and i became used to it eventually right so we did this right now we're supposed to now we're supposed to express a in the standard form how do we do that so now we have its x component we have its y component we are basically using triangle law we are just doing triangle law so that gives us a right a vector is equal to mod a vector cos 60 degree i cap plus mod a vector sin 60 degree j cap all right this is what we get as our a vector and that is how you go ahead and represent any vector in terms of this right and let's say in case over here of course you can go ahead and substitute the value of cos 60 and sin 60 we know cos 60 is equal to 1 by 2 and sin 60 is equal to root 3 by 2 you can just go ahead and put in the value you can take 1 by 2 common and then you're going to get the value you're going to get a mod a vector plus root 3 mod a vector right you can take mod a vector also common so you're going to get 1 plus root 3 a mod a vector by 2 into 1 plus root 3 right now we're going to do this next question super quick all right within seconds let's go ahead and do this question now what we are given as this is your b vector all right we're given that this is your b vector and now we are given that this is your vertical component or your y component and this is your horizontal component x component cos component and this is your i cap this is your j cap this angle is given as let's say 45 degrees so we need to go ahead and represent b vector in standard form how do we do that let's go ahead and do that within seconds so we can write b vector is equal to mod b vector now what is this one going to be as i said use the shortcut uh, this over here will be equal to mod b vector cos right cos 45 degree just look at this if the angle is squished between the two rays then this ray which is other than the vector itself that becomes your uh, cos 45 or your cos theta and the one where the angle isn't present becomes your sine right that's two seconds to visualize but you can use your you know trigonometry as well i would suggest use trigonometry because that is a lot more visual than just you know mugging up something and just you know, doing it so yeah so you get mod b vector cos 45 degree oh that's that's a mistake don't forget to add i cap plus mod b vector sin 45 degree j cap so we are basically going to get b vector and over here you can take common also right you can take it common as well and over there where i said one plus root three that is going to be i sorry i wrote j while saying i so one plus root three over there what i meant is i cap plus under root three j cap all right you need to mention the unit vectors i cap j cap and k cap as well only then it becomes your vector and only once it becomes a vector you can apply the triangle law of vector addition which gives you the standard form of the vector right so over here what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take mod b vector by root 2 common because cos 45 is 1 by root 2 we're going to get i cap plus j cap so this is how you can go ahead and simplify this as well so basically what you have to do to expand this is multiply this magnitude with this and multiply this magnitude with this right two seconds done that's all all right it's it's 
that simple now we know how to break it into components how to do this how to do that we know a lot now we can do a lot with components now let's go ahead and see how do we add any two vectors using their components right and also let's say over here we were just talking about two dimensions let's say that there's a vector in three dimensions right so instead of just having i cap and j cap we will also have right we will also have our k cap it's that simple now let's say this is our plane and let's say we have some vector over here this is going to be hard to visualize because all right now imagine this is coming out wait let me just try creating this okay so this just a second okay this is way too fat and i'm going to do this i'll hold this with my right yeah this is difficult so difficult i don't know how people do it okay yes so this basically becomes your x y and z component right this is your x component y component your z component that is coming out it really doesn't matter this can be your x component this can be your y component this can be your z component doesn't matter now let's say that we have a vector that is coming out like this in the middle right if you guys can see my god this is impossible my hands are too small i'm going to let gravity hold this for me yeah that's that's smart i'm going to let gravity oh my god gravity this is this is why the torque that this gravity is yup please yeah so now we have it proper right so if this is your x y z anything right this can be your z 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 these have to be mutually perpendicular right now i'm putting the vector like this all right the vector is coming out all right if you guys can see this is how the vector is coming out that all mutually perpendicular this is how vector is coming out i'm pretty sure now you understood now what we are going to do is we are just going to take component in all the directions it's just that all right it's just that so what it basically means over here is that instead of just using triangle law for two vectors we are going to use triangle law for three vectors all right so over here your cos component if we see along x axis let's let's just talk about x axis so if we see component along x axis it's going to be something like this along uh, if we see if we see along y axis it's going to be something like this and if we go ahead and see along z axis then it's going to look something like this now basically here we are supposed to use the triangle law of vector addition so if we use the triangle law of vector addition how do we do this right now i know this might look a little complicated but just just look at it carefully what we're going to do is we're going to take the resultant vector of this one and this one all right let's do that quickly so the resultant comes out something like this across the plane across if this is your x y and z this is the across the x and z plane right this is across the x and z plane now we don't really care about these two all right so we can remove them give me a second i'll make it look better just give me a second okay this is how we were my god okay Just give me a second so this is how we were getting the resultant vector right of the two components the x component and z component now what we are going to do is we are going to take the resultant of y component and the resultant of x and z component right 
what will that give us yes you guys are right that is going to give us the vector that we initially started with in the first place right it's going to give us this vector all right let me show you how now we're going to go ahead and shift this upwards let's shift it upwards okay so we shift this upwards and then we shift it a little towards our right our left little towards our left right so we shift it like this so that it touches the head of the other vector the tail of this vector touches the head of the tail of the other vector so it's going to look something like this right right or let me just draw this a little better this this should be coming out like this a little more okay something like that now if we go ahead and bring this up this is going to be crossing like this right i really wish i had sticks right now i could show you this is a little complicated it's head to tail we're going to go ahead and arrange this so this will be crossing this y and z plane right it's going to be crossing this y and z plane and then if we take the resultant from here from the tail of one vector to the head of the other vector just give me a second okay i'm really sorry guys i i realized where i made the mistake the resultant wouldn't be this the resultant was wrong the resultant that we took over here was wrong all right i'm really sorry <laughs> don't lose confidence in me it's just that i didn't sleep properly today so yeah we have this as our x component this as our z component now what we did which was wrong was we took this as our uh, resultant which is wrong what we are supposed to do is parallelogram law right so our resultant would come out like this in the middle of x and y sorry x and z plane 45 degrees to each other right why 45 degrees because one is along z one is along x right and we are assuming that the components are same the magnitude of the components are same only then it will be 45 degree otherwise it can be any uh, you know theta so it really doesn't matter now we can go ahead and eliminate this x over here and this z over here because now we have the resultant now now we're going to use the triangle law and if you see and even if we don't use the triangle law using parallelogram law you can clearly see that your parallelogram law in that your parallelogram forms something like this which is coming out of the plane right it is coming like this all right and if you see along its diagonal it wouldn't be like this it will be like this if i drew it properly to scale then this would have been the diagonal of the parallelogram all right my drawing is terrible i know but i'm pretty sure you guys understood the concept right so that is how it works in i j and k you break it into components in all the directions it's that simple right you just have to break it into components in all the given directions right so let's say let's say this is this is the easiest question that i have asked today so let's say we have a vector equal to 3 i cap plus 4 j cap plus 6 k cap So can you guys tell me what the component of a vector along z axis is the magnitude of the component along z axis so we can clearly see it's going to be 6 units right that's all this is this is all that's there you have to use the exact same concept break it into components right now we're going to see how we can add or how we can you know subtract two vectors using components it takes seconds all right i'm just going to do this within seconds let's say we have any two vectors right let's say we have this a vector over here and here you're going to understand the importance of choosing the axis properly and let's say we have another vector something like 
this and of course i'm going to make them joint as well because either these will have to shift it so let's say another vector something like this all right this is another vector b vector right now let's say i don't want to use parallelogram law because if i use parallelogram law i can clearly see that over here magnitude of b is a little greater so it will be a little shifted towards this side all right it will be along diagonal itself of the parallelogram that these two make over here but let's say i don't want to use the parallelogram law what i can do over here is i'm going to choose an axis right now i'll tell you what's the importance of axis importance of choosing the axis properly let's say i choose the axis randomly all right let's say i choose the most convenient most used to one this is the axis that we are most used to right let me just draw this so this is the axis that we are most used to right so i do this and just remember the exact same concept is used in three dimensions of vector as well right the exact same concept is used nothing's different all right so this becomes your x axis this becomes your y axis over here now what we're going to do is we're going to break them into components and then we're just going to use some basic vector logic right so if we break it into components let's go ahead and break b into components right so we get one like this and the other one is of course going to match its height so it should be something like this all right similarly let's do it for uh a vector as well right your a vector is a little bigger than your b vector so this is how its y component would look like and this is how its x component would look like right now we can see that this vector is opposing this vector all right now for those of you if you are new to vectors of course over here you would be you know you would be trying to apply you would try and apply the formula that we derived in the previous one which is absolutely right let's go ahead and do that so we can clearly see that the component right we are taking these two components the components over here are at 180 degrees so let's go ahead and use the formula that we used last time let's assume this component to be a let's say this component is b so when we use the formula which is the resultant vectors formula which is r resultant vector magnitude of resultant vector is equal to square magnet square of the magnitude of first vector second vector plus 2ab cos theta theta is the angle between two vectors you can see that they're joined tail to tail and the angle between them theta is equal to 180 degrees right So if theta is equal to 180 degrees, we know that cos 180. So we will just go ahead and substitute in the value. So we get r is equal to a square plus b square plus 2ab into cos of 180 degrees is minus one. So that gives you a minus b the whole square under root is equal to r vector. So we get resultant vector. The magnitude of resultant vector. basically as a minus b that's all that's all and of course over here it's going to be mod because we are taking it out of the root right so we understand this as well we understood this right so whenever two vectors are opposing i mean it's it's kind of common sense if one vector is going like this and if the other vector which is 180 degree from it is going like this the magnitude of this vector will be cancelled out from this and whatever is remaining is your vector right of course this is not where it begins to initiate it just less the magnitude becomes lesser so it actually gets you know removed from the top just a visual visualization is nothing like that really happens just a visualization so whatever was there this gets eliminated and it takes away the same part from this vector as well so you just have to do a minus b mod of a minus b just to see the magnitude of the difference between the two 
vectors all right and similarly when we see over here we have the y components of b vector as well as a vector in the same direction so of course they're going to be adding right the resultant will be greater right think of it like this if if you have if you have a velocity and if you're giving more velocity in the same direction then the resultant velocity of the two velocities will be greater right it will be even greater right so you have to add when they're in the same direction when they're in the opposite direction you have to subtract Right, and opposite, I mean 180 degrees, same direction means zero degrees. All right, it shouldn't be that there is some angle very small or whatever. It should be zero degrees. Even over here, we can go ahead and put in the formula. And if we put in the formula, let's, let's assume the y component of b vector. y component of b vector to be, let's say, what, p? Actually, let, let this one be q and for a vector let the y component be equal to p now let's just go ahead and use the formula this is going to take two seconds so we're going to get r is equal to p square plus q square plus 2ab cos theta we know that theta over here is equal to zero degrees cos zero is equal to one so can we just go ahead and cancel this cos theta out can we uh, not zero can we write that as one so we get r is equal to under root p square plus q square plus 2ab sorry sorry not 2ab i'm really sorry plus 2pq 2pq now we can clearly see that this is the formula of a plus b the whole square so we can write r is equal to under root p plus q the whole square which is basically r is equal to mod of p plus q mod of p plus q done that's how you prove it within seconds you're done and now when you add the two vectors right when you add the two vectors the resulting component that you're getting if you add the resulting component you get the resultant of the two vectors right so now if we go ahead and see over here our resulting component will be in this direction because magnet will be in if we talk about the uh, resulting x component it will be in this direction right in the positive x because the magnitude of b the magnitude of component of b along x is greater than magnitude of component of a along x right and uh, the magnitude of the resulting component will be what b minus a right so that will be b minus a so we can write that as b minus a i cap plus what is the resultant along y resultant along y was resultant along y was p plus q j cap and what is this this is your a vector plus b vector this is how simple it is now i know if some of you guys would be <laughs> thinking that this isn't easy at all it is very easy when we do questions on this it makes it super super easy within seconds it can be done right and right now you might you, you might be thinking that over here you can use the uh, magnitude of resultant vector formula which is absolutely right for two vectors you don't really need to use this component addition thing right you have to start using this addition using components when there are multiple when there are many many vectors because then you're not going to go ahead and find the angle between each one of them and then you know break them into uh, and then you know find the resultant and then find the resultant of the resultant with the with the other vector then resultant of resultant you get it right like as we saw in polygon thing right so that that's how simple it is we'll we'll, we'll be using components as in when the number of vectors in a question increases right so now we have what remaining we have only one more topic remaining which is multiplication of vectors all right now i'm just going to drink some water
Now this topic is actually really small. If I want, I can of course extend it to another class and then make it one hour more. But there's no point in extending it. It's very simple. So multiplication of vectors. First, we're going to see how we can multiply vector into scalar, right? How do we multiply a vector into scalar? Can we multiply two into i cap, right? Of course we can, because we just did that. Two into i cap basically means that two is the magnitude of the vector that is going along i cap direction, right? So of course we can. And let me give you another example. This is just basic. If, if we are talking about multiplication of scalar into vector, you just have to multiply it with each of the components. Let's say I have to do, let's say I have a vector. All right, let's say I have a vector is equal to two i cap plus seven j cap plus three k cap. Now let's say I want to find four times a vector. What will this be equal to? This is basically going to be equal to two i cap, four into two i cap plus seven j cap plus three k cap, right? Which again, basically is multiply this. First multiply four with this, then multiply four with this, then multiply four with this. We probably figured that out, right? So it'll be eight i cap, plus 28 j cap plus 12 k cap that's how simple it is right so multiplying scalar with a vector is very very simple you just have to multiply it with each of its components right with each of its components right and if you want to see it visually how would this look visually so let's say we have uh, a vector as i cap when it's written i cap this basically means one i cap which means the magnitude of a vector is equal to one, right? So if we draw this in the Cartesian plane, let's, let me make the Cartesian plane, all right? I won't put these Z axis because that just makes everything a lot more complicated, especially in 2D. If it was 3D, then it would have made it so much easier. All right, so I mean, someone should, you know, actually work on making 3D screens like without glasses. So yeah, now, so when we talk about this, how are we going to plot this? This is basically just going to be this, right? This is going to be your I cap. This is your one I cap magnitude one along I cap direction. Now, if I, if I do over here, if a vector is equal to, if a vector is equal to I cap, if I do two a vector, then that gives me two I cap, which basically means that now the magnitude of the resultant vector becomes two, right? It becomes twice of the original. So if it becomes twice of the original, now it's going to go ahead and look something like this twice of the original. This becomes your two I cap. So it's very simple to multiply a scalar into a vector. Now we're going to see how do we multiply vector into vector, right? Let's go ahead and see that. So now I'm going to be picking up some speed, right? Now, so let's go ahead and get started. So when we talk about multiplication of vectors, right? Multiplication of vectors can be done in two different ways. Multiplication of vectors. Now this can be done in two different ways, right? First, you have something called as a scalar product, right? Then you have something called as a vector product, right? We're going to look at both of them. Both are just going to take a few seconds, right? So what is your scalar product and what is your vector product? These are just two different operations that you perform on two vectors, right? So when you do scalar product, of course, as the name itself suggests, you get a scalar, right? When you do scalar product of two vectors, you are going to get a scalar quantity, right? Now, for example, f dot s f vector dot s vector right now this scalar product over here is also called as dot product so now carefully use this dot don't just use this for multiplication because otherwise you know you might get confused and this is also known as your cross product right so this is your dot product this is your cross product 
your dot product always yields a value which is scalar in quantity right which is which is a scalar quantity right so if you have any two vectors and if you do scalar product on them then what you get is a scalar quantity and when we talk about vector product of course as the name itself suggests we represent this as a cross all right we put a cross in between here we put a dot in between what does f dot s give you maybe a few people might already know this gives you work all right and what does r cross f give you maybe a few people might know this gives you torque all right even if you don't know it it's all right now torque is a vector quantity right torque is a vector quantity while work is not a vector quantity right so you get f dot s as work f over here is your force vector s is your displacement vector r over here is actually it, it takes some time to understand but for those of you who have some knowledge about rotation r is basically your distance where your force is being applied from the axis of rotation all right even if you don't know that right now just forget it all the extra information that i deliver if you remember them they're going to help you or you can just skip them because either way i'm going to be covering them later on in this course right okay so let's go ahead and continue so over here this work is our scalar quantity torque is a vector quantity how do we find dot product of any two vectors to find dot product of any two vectors we can do it in two different ways right we have two methods of doing this one where we are using the standard form all right where we use standard form of vectors other where we are just finding the magnitude all right let's go ahead and talk about magnitude one first because that takes a few seconds right so dot product of any two vectors in the magnitude form is just going to be let's say we have two vectors right let's say we have f okay let's take f vector and s vector alone itself right so if we do f vector dot s vector the magnitude of this will be magnitude of f vector into magnitude of s vector into cos 90 degree and this is exactly why we say that no work is done if you are you know applying the force perpendicular to the displacement right so when you're carrying your book you're actually applying a normal force which is acting perpendicular to your displacement that is why no work is done right and you would have seen that most of the books begin work power energy with this itself that you know it pisses off people that they we don't consider them to do any physical work but they are doing physical work now this is how we do it so f we just have to find the magnitude of first vector right multiply it with magnitude of second vector multiply it into this cos 90 not not cos 90 and this is just an example right multiply it into cos theta theta is the angle between the two force uh, two vectors right just give me a second theta is the angle between the two vectors let's go ahead and take an example so let's say your force is acting something like this this is your f vector and let's say your displacement is something like this now what's your angle your angle theta is this right that's your angle theta so now if you have to find the dot product over here your dot product will be magnitude of f vector times magnitude of s vector times cos theta and similarly if we see the magnitude even even when we talk about uh, even when we talk about cross product even cross product there are two ways to do it first we have the standard form right we have the standard form and then we have the magnitude form the magnitude form is almost exactly the same as this right so let's say we are supposed to do r vector cross f vector this over here just gives us the magnitude all right this this over here gives the magnitude this is the magnitude even over here when we do r vector cross f vector we get mod r vector times mod f vector into sin theta that's the only difference into sin theta this gives you the magnitude of vector that is formed because of cross product of r and f all right i'm going to repeat again this value that you got over here this is the magnitude of the vector 
right this is the mag what what's happening this is the magnitude of the vector that is formed because of the cross product of r cross f right now let's go ahead and see how do we do dot product in standard form right how do we go ahead and do it it's very very simple all right and it's going to take few seconds i know I, i keep saying few seconds and i take long i know just just give me some time so now let's say standard form standard form we remember what it is right a i cap plus b j cap plus c k cap right we remember that so let's say now we're supposed to do okay just give me a second now what we do over here is we define two vectors a vector as 2i cap plus 3j cap plus 4k cap and similarly we have b vector as 5i cap plus 2j cap plus let's say 0k cap right now what we have to do over here is we need to do a vector dot b vector so we need to find dot product how do we do this right this is very 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 extremely simple so simple that you wouldn't even feel like doing it but <laughs> we'll still do it so this over here is going to be let's just go ahead and write this so we have to do 2i cap plus 3j cap plus 4k cap just give me a second what how did that go all right so we have we have 2i cap plus 3j cap plus 4k cap right dot 5i cap plus 2j cap plus 0k cap all right also there is there is actually two more topics in vectors that i should i think i should teach you and i think i'll cover that separately in just a 5 to 10 minute video all right it doesn't really need this big of a video and of course it won't be possible to cover it today because right now we need to finish cross cross product as well so that will be around 5 to 10 minutes i'll upload that video as well you guys can check that out and then we're going to begin with tensors right we need to understand how to calculate the angle between any two vectors which is given in this form right we're going to see that okay so now actually you know what i can teach you this right now itself yeah should i all right let's let's see how it goes first let's go ahead and do this what do we have to do over here right over here remember you need to do dot of this with this this with this this with this then this with this this with this this with this you understand right you you get it and then this with this right so you need to do that i know it it looks really big but you're going to come to a conclusion and after that we just have one step and that's how we solve it right there's basically one step i'm making you do this so that you understand how we got that so let's first do this and this so we're going to get we can multiply the scalars so we're going to get 10 i vector i cap vector dot i cap vector plus now we're going to do this and this right oh, oh my god okay i can't erase it all right so we get this now we're going to do this vector and this one all right so we're going to get 4 i cap dot j cap all right these are performed on vectors don't perform it on scalars right we know how to multiply scalars wait let me take this to the top okay wait should i write it a little more straight yeah i'll write a little now we're going to do this and this so of course 2 into 0 over here will be 0 anyway so actually let's i need to teach you this concept first so i'll just remove the zero otherwise it will come zero itself let's put this as 3 right so even over here let's put this as 3 so we get right we get 
i cap dot k cap right now we're going to begin with this one plus 3 j cap dot i cap all right what did i write 3 sorry sorry I'm really sorry plus 15 right we need to multiply it with that so it's going to be 15 j cap dot i cap right plus 6 j cap dot j cap plus 9 j cap dot k cap we're going to continue here itself plus now we're going to begin with this 20 k cap dot i cap plus 8 k cap dot j cap plus 12 k cap dot k cap now i'm going to do something that makes this entire thing super easy this becomes zero 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 and this becomes zero why did they become zero that's the question because in each one of these cases wherever we are doing i cap dot j cap or if we are doing j cap dot k cap or if we are doing k cap dot i cap right what does this basically mean we are basically doing magnitude of let's say k cap dot i cap right so magnitude of k cap times magnitude of i cap into cos theta what is the angle between i cap and j cap or i cap and k cap and i cap and j cap and k cap what is the angle the angle is 90 degrees so we can go ahead and write this as 90 now wherever we see that the two vectors are perpendicular they're going to be cos 90 right so we're going to put cos 90 cos 90 is what zero so in each one of these cases as long as the dot product of the vector over here is not with itself the value will come out to be zero because others are just perpendicular to it right so over here you can see what's common 10 i i dot i 6 j dot j 12 k dot k now what is i dot i j dot j or k dot k right let me just take i dot i i'm pretty sure you'll figure out it for j dot k and j dot j and j dot k let me just scroll this down so that you guys can see let me okay actually i'll have to go down all right so when we talk about i dot i right what happens over here is this is basically mod i vector times mod i vector into cos of zero degrees because i cap is in the same direction as i cap so the angle between the two vectors is zero degrees so that gives us what is the what is the magnitude of i cap one right into what is the magnitude of i cap again one what is the magnitude of cos zero one so this gives us one right so the dot product over here wherever we have i i dot i j dot j k dot k is basically one so we can cancel this and write one. Oh my god so we can cancel this and write let me use a different color so we can go ahead cancel this and write this as one cancel this write this as one cancel this write this as one so what you're gonna get is 10 plus 6 plus 12 10 plus 6 plus 12 which is equal to 28 so you can see that over here you're not getting any i cap any j cap any k cap because this is a scalar quantity right you you will of course get units over here but you will not get a vector quantity over here you will not get i cap you will not get j cap you will not get k cap because they are getting terminated right if there is i dot j j dot k or k dot i right in each one of these cases they're going to be zero and if there's i dot i j dot j k dot k these are all the permutations that's actually possible so if we have i dot i j dot j k dot k 
then over here they turn out to be one so even they get terminated so you don't get any i j or k values in your final answer so now dot product would be super simple what you have to do is if you want to find let, let me just go ahead and take another example so if you want to go ahead and find dot product of any two vectors in standard form so if you have a vector as 2i cap plus 7j cap plus 20 k cap and b vector as 5i cap plus 3k uh, 3 3j cap actually yeah fine 3 j cap plus 10 k cap what you're gonna do is take i cap i cap multiply that 10 now take j cap j cap multiply that 21 take k cap k cap k cap multiply that 200 so this gives you answer 231 right so we understood how to do it now let's say i give you another example so if you have a vector is equal to 2 i cap plus 3 j cap plus 7 k cap and if we have b vector as 2 k cap what happens over here this basically means that you have 0 i cap and you have 0 what <laughs> what happened okay wait just give me a second i'll erase this so this basically means that you have zero i cap you have zero j cap now what we're going to do multiply this into this two into zero zero three into zero zero two into seven fourteen that gives us the scalar product that's all super simple super super simple you saw that right that the thing that i did earlier was to explain why we get this right because half of the teachers what they do is they just tell you that multiply multiply the magnitude of i into i remove i and just put it as it is and then add all of them that's not how it's taught you need to teach it properly you need to teach it step by step so that it makes sense to the person and similarly when we do it for vector product all right we just have one thing remaining over here you need to know how to use determinants right so i'll i'll just teach you how to take determinants within a few seconds right just practice it on your own and you'll understand also over here before we talk about determinant let's also talk about this that over here as i said that your vector product gives you a vector right over here i taught you that this is the magnitude right this is the magnitude of the vector that is formed because you're crossing r with f right what will be the direction that's the question over here we use something called as the right hand thumb rule and if you guys have heard this earlier in magnetism then yes this is this is where it's derived from right so even in magnetism there is a cross product that's why you use this rule right which the the thing that you do like this right uh, fbi right fbi sorry that thing that is basically the thumb rule so right so how do we go ahead and find the direction of that vector so let's say we have r vector something like this all right you don't need to know what r vector is for now let's say, okay let's say we have a vector view right let's say we have a vector now let's say we have another vector something like this b vector right so we can find we can find out the magnitude if this is if this angle is theta then we can find out the magnitude right we can clearly say that the magnitude is equal to mod a into mod b vector of course into sine theta right that's going to be the magnitude what's direction so if we are doing a vector cross b vector what we have to do is take our hand right take your hand and place it in the direction of a or right? i just do it as i'm doing it now from a curl your hands towards b right so to go from a to b you can go only in this direction of course you can't rip off your finger and <laughs> go in the other direction so you you have to you have to you know bend like this right this is how you go from a to b this is how you're going to go so you're going to get the direction of the resultant vector downwards right you're going to get the direction of the resultant vectors downwards now let's say we're doing 
b vector cross a vector how do we do it put your hand align it with b then turn it around to go to a now you can see that the resultant vector is your thumb where your thumb is pointing so it's pointing upwards now let's say i give you another example let's say this is one vector p vector and let's say this is another vector q vector right let's say we have to do p vector cross q vector can you guys tell me what direction will this be now for those of you who did this and said up the answer is wrong why because you need to join them tail to tail all right you need to join them tail to tail so once you join them tail to tail p cross q will actually give you bottom like this right because this is going to be your p right this is going to be <laughs> this is going to be your p i'm not flexible this is going to be your p and now you're curling towards q so your resultant is downwards now if you're supposed to do q cross p then of course through basic logic you can say it's going to be upwards they're going to be in opposite direction now you would have realized that in all of these cases the resultant vector that we are getting through vector product is always perpendicular to the plane of the vectors right so at any any two vectors right any two vectors take any two vectors in this world make this one huge right you will notice that if let's say the plane is this right if let's say this time the plane becomes this and if it's not going towards the inside instead it's coming like this right it's however you want to assume it so let's say it's going inside right let's say it's going inside so you guys understand it right so now let's call this a vector let's call this b vector so now your plane your plane of the vector actually becomes this i mean if you if you can feel this this is what your plane of the vector actually becomes now if you do a cross b which moves like this then your resultant vector actually comes something like this this is how your resultant vector will be it will be up okay and similarly if you're doing b cross a then it's going to go down right this is how your resultant will be so remember in each of the cases whenever you're doing a vector product whenever you're doing a vector product the resultant vector what you're getting from the vector product will always be perpendicular to the plane of the vectors upon whom you have done the vector product or cross product right that's very simple so magnitude we can find using that uh, mod a or whatever right <laughs> okay fine that was a bad way to say it respect it so you can go ahead and find the magnitude super easily through that you know mod a vector times mod b vector into sin theta where theta is the angle between the two vectors right and if you want to find the direction it depends if it's a cross b or b cross a whatever the vectors are and then just go ahead and put your hand in whatever the first vector is let's say if it's a cross a then put your hand a cross b then put your hand in the direction of a and then fold it in the direction of b when you fold it in the direction of b where, wherever your thumb is pointing that is your resultant vector all right so now we're just going to see how we can do cross product in standard form and that finishes off that will finish off our episode for today all right so now let's say we have vectors right now let's say we have a vector 2 i cap plus 3 j cap plus k cap and b vector as let's say and also remember over here you can have minus as well from from so long i'm taking positive itself let's take minus as well there can be negative as well negative just means that the direction is opposite so how would you plot minus 2 i cap if you want to plot minus 2 i cap take this axis first all right now to plot minus 2 i cap what you have to do is i cap is in this direction right so positive i cap is in this direction what you are going to do is move it here so to plot negative i cap you is going to plot in the direction opposite to this this is going to be a minus 2 i cap as simple as that now we what we have to do is we need to do a cross b again we are going to use the exact same thing that we did in the previous one where we used the standard forms and then we you know multiplied individually and then we saw the result that's what we're going to do here 
and we are going to come at the end we are going to be using determinants because determinants determinant is how it's supposed to be done within seconds right so this is a a vector b vector now let's go ahead and cross them so if we have to do a vector cross b vector how do we go ahead and do this right now to solve this what we do is let's first write it so we have 2i cap plus 3j cap plus k cap cross minus 2i cap minus 7j cap plus 4k cap all right now again individually individually we're going to start with this multiply it into this so we get minus 4 i cap cross i cap right then again minus 14 i cap cross j cap right then plus 8 i cap cross k cap right shift it a little yeah the first thing i'm going to do after i get money is get a better laptop this laptop is is junk all right <laughs> anyways so right now let's move on to this one okay so this is going to give us minus 6 j cap cross i cap now see over here it's important to see the sign over there in dot product it's not important if uh, your f dot s f vector dot s vector is the same as s s vector dot f vector because over there that's not a vector that's a scalar quantity so it's still it's just giving you you know a magnitude right over here this is giving you a vector so it's important that if there is j if j is coming first over here you take j first and then you cross that with i you can't interchange them they are not the same thing they're going to be the opposite direction okay so then we're going to go ahead and multiply so wait i'm going to do this a little faster now so this is going to be minus 21 it's just that i need to know where my picture is going to be my my video is going to be right and then we have plus 12 j cap cross k cap now let's move down hmm. so over here uh, now let's move on to the last one so we get minus 2 into k cap cross i cap let me just fold my I think I'm going to sneeze no it's stuck okay anyways so uh, we have minus 2 k cap cross i cap minus it's just that you need to be very careful if at any one place you mess up that's all game is over you need to do the entire thing again and i am in no mood with the lack of sleep that i'm facing no mood at all to do this again so what i'm going to do is i'm going to concentrate and do this properly so k cap now wherever you see i cap cross i cap cross i cap or j cap cross j cap and k cap cross k cap you can cut them out why because k let's take an example of i cap cross i cap that is basically your mod uh, mod i cap into mod i cap into sign zero right because i cap and i cap is in the same direction so that becomes sign zero sign zero is zero so that eliminates your i i j j k k pair pair right now what we're going to assume i mean we are not going to assume see so initially what we plotted yeah my laptop is a junk so initially what we plotted over there right remember this we had this is the x chord this is that uh this is the x axis just give me a second okay not a second give me five minutes till my laptop knows that it has to click and okay yeah so this is your x which is basically your i cap this is your y which is basically your j cap this is your z 
which is basically your k cap now look carefully i cross j gives you k carefully i cross j gives you k so let's write that i cap cross k cap is equal to, sorry what am i saying i cap cross j cap gives you k cap look at it carefully i cross j gives you k so j cross i will give you what minus k simple right you just have to reverse the direction i reverse the sign right now let's look at this j cross k right j cap cross k cap gives you i cap so k cap cross j cap will give you what minus i cap now if we see this uh if we see this one uh k cap cross i cap gives you j cap so over here your i cap cross k cap would give you what it would basically give you your uh, minus j cap right it will basically i'm running out of words so that will give you minus j cap right so now we are just going to go ahead and substitute the same things over here and uh, yeah so let's go ahead and contract so now we are just going to go ahead and substitute in the value right so over here just give me a second now we can write minus 14 i cross j as what can we write wait let me just change the ink over here yeah so we have minus 14 i cross j is what k cap i cap cross j cap is your k cap now similarly let's look at i cap cross k cap your i cap cross k cap was minus j cap right so this becomes minus 8 j cap similarly let's look at this we have j cap cross i cap j cap cross i cap was your minus k cap right so that gives you plus 6k cap because initially also there was a negative sign now let's look at this j cap cross k cap j cap cross k cap gives you your i cap right positive itself all everything is positive positive over there now let's go ahead and look at k cap cross i cap k cap cross i cap gives you j cap minus 2 just give me a second so k cap cross i cap over here will give you minus 2 j cap all right this will give you minus 2 j cap then last term finally your k cap cross j cap gives you what k cap cross j cap gives you minus i cap right just remember this this is a shortcut i j k that's all i j k make a circle make it like this like this i j k and then what you have to do just make this arrow all right so i cross j is k just look at this i cross j is k j cross k is i k cross i is j right and if it goes anywhere in the opposite direction uh, other than the circles whatever movement no, not movement other than the circles direction then it becomes negative right so k cross j is what did i do over here did i mark it something wrong no 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 i i didn't write it itself so this is going to be minus not minus 7 i cap all right this makes it 7 i cap now what we are going to do is we are just going to go ahead and you know algebraically add all the ones where the you know the comp your component remains the same right where wherever you have k cap k cap you can go ahead and algebraically add them right so what is minus 14 plus 6 that's going to be minus 8 k cap what's minus 8 j cap minus 2 k cap that gives you minus 10 j cap and then finally you have 12 i cap plus 7 i cap that gives you what 19 i cap so your final cross product over here would be 
नाइनटीन आई कैप माइनस टेन जे कैप माइनस एट के कैप दैट इज हाउ यू गो अड एंड डू इट नाउ ऑफकोर्स दिस प्रोसेस इज वेरी लॉन्ग सो टू शॉर्ट एन दिस वी हैव डिटर्मिनेंट्स राइट सो वी कैन जस्ट गो एड एंड यूज द डिटर्मिनेंट्स ओवर हियर हाउ हाउ डू वी यूज द डिटर्मिनेंट्स ओवर हियर इट्स प्रिटी सिंपल वॉट यू हैव टू डू ओवर हियर इज लेट मी सी इफ इट्स रिकॉर्डिंग प्रॉपरली इन ओ बी एस yep it is it is recording pretty well <laughs> okay so all right so to make our lives easier we have the determinant method all right what do we do in the determinant method it's extremely simple all right so let's say over here we have to do a cross a vector cross b vector right what was a vector and b vector let's go ahead and examine that should i have zoomed out no 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 wait all right so your a vector is 2 i cap 3 j cap k cap 2 i 3 j k so a vector 2 i 3 j k and where was your b your b minus 2 minus 7 4 b minus 2 Minus seven four. Now in determinant method, what we're going to do is we're going to do this. All right, remember this. You need to first. You need to remember whether it's a. You need to see clearly whether it's a cross b or b cross a. All right. The only difference over there will be the change in sign. The magnitude is going to remain the same. Everything will remain the same. Only that the sign will be opposite. All right. and of course i'll i'll give you guys a homework go ahead and try to do b cross a you will get the exact same values it's just that there will be a negative sign that will be multiplied to each one of them right just because it's a vector quantity and a cross b is opposite to b cross a now in the determinant method what we do is we first draw this we draw two parallel lines after we draw two parallel lines we write i cap j cap and k cap even if you don't know determinants just just follow what i'm doing over here right just follow what i'm doing over here now write in whatever comes first in the cross product so we can say a is a vector is coming here so we'll write a vector and we'll write 2 3 1 all right now let's look at b vector all right once we look at b vector we will have minus 2 minus 7 4 now to do this what we do is first okay this is vital this is very important let me just move this here now to figure out the determinant what we do is we are going to first start with this all right just look at this very carefully so i write i cap and once i choose i cap you need to start you need to go from i cap j cap and then to k cap all right so once you choose this i cap remove this row remove this column now what you have to do this into this minus this all right so this is going to be 3 into 4 plus 7 into 1 why did i put plus because it's minus right you're supposed to subtract over there so i just took the negative of that now you're supposed to now now what you're going to do is why is my laptop this slow my god but i don't even think it's the laptop's fault now i have been stressing it too much yep all right delete that as well delete these two as well all right now what we're going to do is now we move on to j once you move on to j remove this row remove this column now multiply this subtract the multiplication of this what that means is over here make sure you put minus j cap 
all right make sure i put minus j cap and you have 2 into 4 now minus minus becomes plus so plus 2 into 1 right now again wow <laughs> that that was so quick now um we're gonna move to k cap so k caps here remove this remove this all right now multiply this subtract this over here put it as plus k cap itself no negative it should be alternate okay plus um <laughs> all right so this should be plus k cap just give me a second so this over here should be plus k cap into what do we have minus 7 into 2 plus 2 into 3 all right so we're gonna have plus 2 into 3 now let's see if the answer is correct <laughs> all right so this is this is going to be i cap into what is 4 into 3 12 12 plus 7 is what 19 so okay let me see if the sign is correct if the sign isn't correct then we'll have to reverse the signs all right what's happening yeah okay so the sign is correct so now over here we do the same thing but here we have minus j cap into 2 into 4 is 8 8 plus 2 is 10 and we write k cap over here right now 14 plus 6 minus 8 right so our value over here should be 19 i cap minus 10 j cap minus 8 k cap let's go ahead and verify whether this is what we got initially and yes this is what we got so remember how to solve this all right just remember one thing move 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 from i to j i i i to j and then from j to k as you move to each one of them then cover the row cover the column cross product all right no not cross product not that cross product cross cross them all right multiply them in a cross fashion and then you need to subtract the later one from the initial one all right you need to subtract the later one from the initial one then you have to make sure that you put alternate plus and minus sign all right and of course i can't of course i can't teach you the entire of determinants right now but that is how it works even in determinants right there will be an alternate plus and minus sign okay so this is how you go ahead and do cross product vector product you know addition through components breaking vectors into components expressing vectors as uh, stand in the standard form so all this finishes off our vectors but there is of course one more subtopic remaining that is angle between any two vectors how do we go ahead and figure that out um, i'm going to cover that in maybe tomorrow's video which will be around 15 to 20 minutes you guys can go watch that as well so that this was a fun session do let me know how you guys like this video if there's any sort of criticism i'm criticism i'm completely fine with it i need to give you guys the best if if you guys think that i didn't explain properly in this particular video i will get better you need to let me know so that i i figure out where i'm wrong so that i can give you guys the best all right now let me drink some water and of course i'm going to drink it after this so i'll see you guys in another video till then goodbye